um, when we were discussing what topic to talk about this month, a lot of ideas were thrown around, a lot going on in the industry, uh, kind of consolidation and mobile going away of, of the web, all kinds of very, very interesting topics. But, uh, you know, there's recent events kind of led us uh, to this topic um, to kind of think about the big winners in our space, in our space I mean te technology in general, uh, and what separates the winners from the losers. And Tai always says people like to be part of a winning team, and that's true, and everyone across all industries. So, I said that in the beginning, uh, she's uh, videotaping for our English speaking colleagues. Um, anyway, so, uh, so uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what separates kind of the winners from the losers. Uh, focus on the winners, obviously, and just, you know, um, the pattern that we see uh, amongst all the big winners of the tech space over the last year or two. So, um, three winners of 2012, 2013. Um, you know, these are obviously the three companies that made headlines throughout the last uh, year or two. Um, it's not in chronological order. Instagram, Tumblr, and Waves. Um, you know, big exits, everyone heard about it. Didn't then you need to make up our blog. Um, they're all you know pretty crazy stories. Small independent companies that were bought out by giants in the tech world. Um, and so you know if you take a step back and analyze these three companies and the whole story and the process by which they were acquired, um, really think about it with an analytical eye. You'll, you'll see there might be a common thread. And so that's what I tried to do. Uh, discuss what you know. What is the common thread between uh, these three? Just uh, you know, how big was this win? Lots of zeros. Instagram, <laughs> a billion dollar acquisition, less because it was in stocks, and we all know about Facebook stock value. But putting that aside, they were ripped off. Tumblr was 1.1 billion, and, and Waze also is not fully disclosed, but anywhere between 1.1 and 1.3 billion dollars for Waze. Uh, so I mean, we, we can all agree that these are pretty big wins. So you know. One might say, you know, oh, Yahoo's on a buying uh, spree, and so they're buying out everyone, they don't care. And that's not the case. Clearly, you know, all three of these big success stories came from three different directions, three different companies with three very different strategies. Uh, you know, obviously, Instagram was bought by Zuckerberg, uh, Tumblr was bought by Marissa Mayer, Yahoo, and, you know, that weighs in Google. So, I mean, again, these are three very, very different companies, very different strategies, very different directions, and yet they're all buying these, these independent um, Kind of a strange acquisition, kind of from like a business perspective. We're going to get into it, but I mean, if you think about these three, these three acquisitions, what do they have in common? I'm curious to know if anybody has any ideas in terms of what are these three? Why were these three companies bought for over a billion dollars by these huge companies? Yeah. Users, actually, users. Users? So they have so 50 million users. That's what Google Maps needs. Social. So. Um. Okay. Alonso. Social. Social. Social what? Community. Social. The whole experience is social. It's about sharing information, sharing. Tumblr's now it's a blogging platform. There are social features. No, I agree that blog, blogging is, in, is a form of interaction on the web. But I'm saying it's first and foremost it's a content creation platform. It's not. It's not a social platform by any means. I know that at least for ways in Tumblr there was one or a couple of guys with one very specific vision, and they didn't compromise for anything. The other idea is they came to solve human needs. Human needs. Blocking the competitors. Really? In ways? Yes. Ways block Google Maps and Apple Maps? No. And no. They, they bought it to block Apple and Facebook. Oh, you're saying? Okay, but yeah. is that true with other ones? They, they, Instagram, no, no, no. Well, it's, it's, uh, in Instagram, yes. Instagram, yes. Another yeah. example. Okay, that's an interesting series. So All right. So you're saying it was more, it wasn't the actual company they were buying, they were buying, you know, it's just a so, block. So yeah. uh, the other companies will not buy it. Okay. So I, I just let's just knock off what they don't have, and, and I think if you you know if you meet startups specifically in Israel, but in general, I think in the valley also, if you meet startups, they all have kind of from, from you know from pitching investors or doing PR, they always have their like four criteria that they four or five criteria. They say you know we have this, we have this, we have this. And let's look at what and what most startups aim achieve to achieve, and, and whether or not those criteria were, were relevant when it came to these companies. Millions in revenue, profit, zero. Right, you know, in, in VCs, investors in general, like how much traction do you have? How many users do you have? How much revenue do you have? It's a big factor when investing. But these three companies, we'll talk about it in a second. Hardcore technology, right? Everyone says, "What's your differentiator?" You know, how are you different? 
How are these three different? I don't know. From a technology perspective, talk about it. No competitors, right? Know your landscape. Know your, you have to be different than everyone. You can't have any competitors. Oh, you're a competitor? Forget it. I'm not investing in you. That's what a lot of VCs will say. A solid business model. Okay, maybe you don't have traction right now, but you have potential for it. Show me the size of the market. Show me how you're going to go to market. What's your strategy? How are you going to make millions of dollars? Otherwise, I'm not investing. So did any of these companies have any of these things? Let's drill down, shall we? Instagram. Revenue? Zero. They did not make a cent. Literally. Not a saturation. Not a cent. Hardcore technology? Nada. There's nothing there, right? There's a photo sharing platform. There was many before it. We'll talk about that in a second. But there was, there's literally nothing, technologically speaking, at all in Instagram. There's a scaling of the servers. <coughs> talking about insane numbers in terms of photo sharing, but... You know, anybody can build servers. It's just servers. That's all it is. <coughs> Scalability. There's no technology there whatsoever. No competitors. There was, there were many, many, many photo sharing apps before Instagram. Many, many of them after Instagram. There's Israeli. There's Mobley. Systematic. There's Pick There's, there's Facebook. Google. There's so many. It's not even worth. I mean, there's so many. There's so many competitors. That is not what the differentiator here. Oh. Is that no, Facebook? No, it's Facebook, no? No. Facebook. But it, 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 no, it's different, it's not a sharing. Anyway, the point is they have many, many competitors. A solid business model, negative, nothing. They have no business model from day one till the day they were acquired. They have no business model. They never even aimed at revenue. They never even thought about revenue. It never came up in their lingo. It was never, never a discussion at Instagram. Tumblr. They had revenue of $14 million after five years. Uh, I think it was Reuters who put it basically the same revenue as a New York deli. Right? It's not revenue. Right? Okay. Yeah, I mean, like a middle of the line New York deli. I mean, it, it, that's not that's not that's not why like Marissa and Mayor bought them for 1.1 billion dollars, so the 14 million dollars after five years. Hardcore technology, nothing. What's Tumblr? It's a, it's a blogging platform, like any other blogging platform. It's a website, basically. And again, there's scalability, but that's not technology. No competitors. They have the biggest competitors, right? There's Blogger, which is owned by Google. WordPress, which is the biggest blogging platform in the world. Tumblr wasn't anywhere near there in terms of scale. What was it? I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't no competitors that, that was exciting. Again, no solid business model at all. They had some ads, very ineffective advertising. Just, they had no business model, period. Ways. Revenue undisclosed. I wonder why. At the end of the day, we'll talk about their business model, but they, they rolled out their advertising uh, Q, at Q4 2012, a few months ago, basically. And nobody, it, it's, it's not mentioned anywhere. They, they didn't make it. But the bottom line, Waze was not making money. They weren't. They, I'm not saying people didn't click when you're standing still. I'll talk about it in a second. But I mean, what was their business model? What is their business model? They have advertising when you're standing still at a red light. So then it will pop up an ad. It will maybe show you gas, gas prices near you. And maybe they cut a deal with some. It wasn't, it wasn't an effective business model. They have more than that. They have, uh, they have ads on search. They have these uh, parking Search places. in Waze? Yeah, yeah. If you yeah. search for a parking yeah. place in Tel Aviv, then the first one will be. So this is brand new. This is like in the last two or three months. Yeah. Okay, so but clearly that's but right. before the advertise yep. about you know uh, banks and you know with the location of right. banks. No, they had they had ads when you stood still. But no, 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 no. Uh, in, in, the match. Match. Yeah. in the match. In the match. Oh, right. So they cut deals with. It's like promotion. They didn't have any. I mean, the, the revenue was insignificant. It wasn't scalable. It wasn't. Yeah, plus they didn't have that much users, so. Right. I mean, the, num the numbers. Are, well, it's impressive on an Israeli scale, and, and it is. Everyone loves weight, right? At the end of the day, I mean, these numbers are not, you know. Um, hardcore technology, crowdsourcing apps, it's great, and they have some sort of technology, uh, motion detection, reporting, it's, there is something there, something, can't explain it from a technological perspective, but it's not groundbreaking by any means, it's no... Uh, genius, it's not groundbreaking. No, it's, it's genius. genius. It's genius. Yeah. Agreed. It's, it's, no, it's groundbreaking. What, the, the technology? The, the, no, the, the product. The application of the 100%, technology. 100%. 100%. We'll talk about that in a second, right. But I'm saying from a technological perspective, just technology, right? Is it, is it a technology that you would hear and say, wow, that's a technology that no one has ever done before, I need to invest because it's a technology or because it's, it's, it's an experience? It's when I talk about the experience, the application of the technology is brilliant. It's, it's, not the, it's the trolley. It's the trolley. It's the concept. Just like the concept of trolley, everyone had suitcase, everyone had wheels. Right. Everyone thought about it. So it's the application, in other words, it's the implementation or manifestation of it. Yeah. But it's not the technology on a, on a stand, as a standalone technology that's, that makes it uh, special. No competitors, again, they have the biggest competitors out there. Google Maps, and it's not even a competitor. There's no one that will tell you that, that Waze has coverage like Google Maps has. Google Maps is the best 
It is the best experience out there. Again, that's it's not like Google. About their ability to map and find crowdsourcing. Right. Yeah, they don't have any competitors about real time data. They don't have any yeah, competitors. From a user perspective. From a user perspective, they don't have any competitors you know, about traffic. They don't have any competitors that can map and route yeah. areas that no one in the world. But when I'm in Boston, I want turn by turn navigation. Accurate turn by turn. I don't yeah, care. Also to know where the traffic yeah. But wait, is that doesn't have global coverage. Google Maps does. They, yes, they yeah. do. They, they do have yeah. maps, but they, they don't have, they have the they use the yeah. world. To, to right. To so, they're, so they're always expanding. Yeah. And yeah. now, you know, yeah. beginning was first it was Israel, then it was San Francisco, then it was New York. It's okay. always expanding. They still they don't have the coverage that Google Maps has, and they, they probably never will now that they bought it. Right. No, I'm 100. percent There's, there's, unique, there's nothing unique. Does not, does not have the coverage of the equipment in terms of traffic. In terms of also uh, map, the area. You mean the, the roads? Mm -hmm. I think the question is the the, uh, the focus on the main front channel. You know, is I want to turn by turn direction to everywhere, A to Z, wherever and I am. This is the this is the category that turn by turn you have the. Destinator, you had many applications that did that. For ninety dollars, they're, they're gone. For ninety dollars, right? For ninety nine, ninety nine dollars, you had you know. Much more, one thousand dollars. No, but I'm saying on the on, on the mobile platform, you had apps that were hundred dollars and ninety nine. And then Waze came and said, okay, here's turn-by-turn for free, right? We're gonna talk about the experience, but I'm just saying again, from competitors and from a technology perspective, that's not why Google bought them. That's, that's what I'm saying. If they needed the technology, Google would develop the technology. They have R and D resources to develop it. That's not what they were buying. They weren't buying the technology, in my opinion. Yeah, that's not true. I'm happy to debate it after. Anyway, a solid business model, again, location-based ads and driver standing still, really. So not the money, not the technology, but then what, what is it really? What is the common thread here between these three, these three companies? Uh, you know, some interesting things were thrown out here. Uh, I think it's probably, in my opinion, is a little bit of a mixture of everything. The magic word is product. All three of these companies, from day one, did not think about technology, did not think about revenue or business model. They focused on their product from day one. Zoomed in on their product and they said, everything else will come afterwards. First, let's build a product that people are going to love. Not going to use because it's there, because Google Maps is also there, because WordPress is also there, right? They're going to, they're going to use Waze and they're going to use Tumblr, they use Instagram because they love the experience that we're building for them. Truly an emotional experience. They don't just use it, they love it feel emotionally connected to this experience. And, and I think there aren't many companies um, that have polished their product so much that people feel this emotional uh, connection to their product. And these three examples are classic examples of such companies. It's not what you do, it's how you do it, right? Again, yes, again, there's technology. I'm not saying there's no technology, but it's not the technology that, that made ways what, what made ways. It's, it's how they did it. It's the experience that people Love Waze. Anybody? I, I rarely come across a person that uses Waze and doesn't say, "I love that app." Right? Same thing with Tumblr and Instagram. I'll give you, I'll give examples later on, but the point is, people love Instagram. Right? They live on Instagram. It's it's apps, it's sometimes borderline insane how much time people spend on Instagram. Tamara. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, that's true. That Tamara said Instagram's a hype. No, but it's true. I mean, people really, really spend so much time on Instagram. And if you take Facebook for example, and just uh, one example of it. People are, are on Facebook, why? Because everyone's on Facebook. Not because they feel that they love the experience of Facebook. On the contrary, people, generally speaking, at least in my circles, kind of hate the experience on Facebook. They're there because everyone's there, it's kind of the default and whatever it is, but they don't, they do feel an emotional connection on the other side. But other applications or other services that we all use, we use because they're convenient, because they're there, whatever, we don't, we don't love them. These three, can speak to you know the average user, they actually feel this emotional connection. Why is that? How did that happen? The answer is because of polish, right? These guys spend years polishing their platform, every little detail down to the smallest thing that you know, they probably no one spent years? Yeah. Yeah. Instagram? One year. Years? Yeah, it was one, one year. It was it was R and D involved, but just because they started many years. It was one year. On Instagram? Five years. One year what? One year what? One year what? One year what? One year, in year. Since it was out. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so I'm saying you wait. That's not the time. 
you're on Instagram, you see pictures aren't full full size images, right? Whereas let's say for example, Google Plus, they, they talk about it, they're so proud of how they upload your full resolution picture. Now, one can debate this. I think at the end of the day, the average Instagram user will say, I prefer an app that flies. Flies, and I don't have to wait at all, and it will upload a little bit of a, a lower resolution photo, but it will fly over, upload a four mega, uh, megabyte picture, and it will take me 35 seconds to wait every time I'm, you know, if you've used Vine, for example, Twitter's video uh, app. You, you want to watch a video, it's a six second video, and you're waiting for 10 seconds for it to load. It's a horrible experience, right? And so people are complaining about it, and they're trying to fix it, when now Instagram's adding video to compete, but the point is, it's low resolution pictures, not low resolution, like crappy, pix pixelated, but relatively low, low resolution, so it flies. And they were, they were focused, they didn't say, and again, this is up for debate, we can debate it, but Instagram said we want to focus, right? We're gonna release it in iOS, we're gonna go viral, we're gonna polish and polish and polish, yes, we'll go to Android, of course we'll go to Android, we'll go to other, we'll go to other platforms, but let's focus right now. This is what we need to focus on. Whether or not they made the smart decision to only go iOS or cross-platform, that's up for debate, but it gave them the ability to focus on one product and make it the best that they possibly make. Tumblr, right? What's better? What's better about Tumblr as opposed to WordPress or Blogger? I'm putting Blogger aside for one second. WordPress, right? WordPress is the mo most popular blogging platform in the world. WordPress is great. It has extensions. It's very advanced. It's you know, a comprehensive solution if I want to build you know, a, a web property. Everything you want to do is there in WordPress. Great. What happens if I want to upload a picture of my cat? So I'm going to open up a WordPress, start editing, it's at least a 10 minute process. In Tumblr, 30 seconds you have a blog post. It's one click authoring. It's for the simple, you know, the simple things that make it special. And that's, again, what made it completely go viral. I think they're, I don't remember, they're not 50 million blogs? I don't remember the number. But the point is, it was one click authoring, it's accessible to anyone. My mother can write a blog post on Tumblr. My mother could not write a blog post on WordPress, not a chance. Um, Built-in viral engines, right? There's re-blogging. Re, re uh, and just, it's so easy for a blog post on Tumblr to go viral. So easy. I mean, you, you write good content, you will go viral on Tumblr. Not, you know, crazy viral, but you can easily go viral and get wider distribution than anywhere else. As opposed to WordPress, which has extensions and tweet buttons, and it's a huge headache. If you're a beginner and you want to write a blog, good luck with WordPress. Tumblr, you'll be up in 45 seconds, you'll have a blog. Uh, again, it's small little animated GIFs, right? We, we laugh about it and the, the funny things that, you know, they're cute, but at the end of the day, that's the differentiator, right? Tumblr is all that animated gifts, and it's a cute, fun experience. You go to Tumblr, you smile, period. You go to WordPress, you get a little bit of a headache, right? Tumblr is all about the experience from day one, and they succeeded in becoming the cool, you know, trend, trendy blogging platform. If I want to write something on the web, of course we want to Tumblr. Again, focus, right? Yes, we're going to do mobile. Yes, we're focusing right now on making Tumblr the best it could possibly be. Waze, chicken and egg solution. This is a very interesting thing that I think Waze is completely unique in the industry as far as I know. Every social startup, every social company out there, anybody that works in the social space has a serious chicken and egg problem, right? Because if I open your app and I'm the only user, social, your social app, right? I only have recommendations, let's say. And I'm the only user, your app is worthless to me, right? It needs users. But if there's no value, the users aren't coming. And if there are no users, there's no value. You're stuck, right? You need users for there to be value in a social app. Right? And you need value to have users, because users aren't coming, there's nothing there. So it's a real problem. So what did Waze come and say? They said, wait a second. Yes, we're going to do the social crowdsourcing, we're going to do the traffic, it's going to be great. But what happens if I'm the only Waze user in the world, then I, then I have nothing to do in the, in the app? Absolutely not. Like you said, there were apps that were doing turn-by-turn -turn navigation for $99 on the iPhone. Waze come, came and said, no, 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 we're going to give you turn-by-turn -turn navigation for free on existing maps. As soon as it goes viral, because everyone's going to love this free turn-by-turn -turn navigation, now all of a sudden there's going to be another layer, more value. Because people are going to start crowdsourcing the traffic, you know, police, banks, gas prices, that's another layer. But out of the box, Waze gave value that no one else gave, right? Social apps don't understand this in general. I mean, you know, start, oh yeah, we're going to go viral. What happens if I'm the only user? I have nothing to do there. Waze solved that. And that was really about polish. It was about really sitting down and brainstorming, how do we make this experience unique? Uh, all these, you know, cops, gas prices, traffic, cross-platform. Focus. They were all, from day one, about focus. They were just about improving the experience. They were not busy worrying about business models. Now, like I said before, what's unique, the, the result of all these things, is an emotional connection, right? I don't think anyone has ever heard anyone say, oh my god, I love Facebook. I love going there. Maybe some people do. I don't know. I don't know anybody like that. But if you look at people, and this is just one example of many, and I'm one of them. I love Instagram. I'm there probably uploading 15, 20 pictures a day. A little bit sad. Uh, this is Omalik, who's probably 
the father of all tech bloggers in the industry, Giga Ohm, if you've heard of him. He's a huge guru, and this is what he said publicly. People love Instagram. It is my single most used app. I spend an hour a day on Instagram. Do you uh, just stop and think about that for one second? This is a photo sharing app that in no way enhances your, the necessities of your day to day life. You don't need to be on Instagram, right? It doesn't give you oxygen or food. You're spending an hour a day there. Do you know what kind of retention that is? I mean, Maor can tell, tell you in terms of our, you know, do you know what kind of retention, what kind of results we would see if people spend an hour in the apps that were, it's unbelievable, right? I have made friends based on photos they share. I know how they feel and how they see the world. Facebook lacks soul. Instagram is all soul and emotion. How did that happen? It didn't happen because Instagram said, oh, I'm going to start monetizing now. I'm going I'm to make a platform for, 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 for sharing apps, but I'm going I'm to, you know, throw in a few, a few business models to just impress the investors. No, they focused on the product and they said, we want people to not like this product, but to love this product. We want soul. This is uh, the early Tumblr employee that I quoted before. Intense focus requires neglecting almost everything else. David Karp was the founder of Tumblr. David's focus on pushing the product forward meant that he didn't want to think about boring stuff. Boring stuff. Support, scaling, paperwork, money. I'm focusing on product. Every time you get close to needing more funding, I try to convince David to hold out a bit longer or try to become profitable. Let's, let's throw in more ads, right? Let's get more clicks. And he convinced me that everyone was better off if we focus on the product instead. And every time, he was right. At the end of the day, there is no way Yahoo would have bought them. There is no way Yahoo would have bought them if, 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 if the app, if uh, the site looked like, uh, you know, other sites, or even like Facebook right now, that's trying to monetize, raise their stock price. It's a huge mess. They don't know how to monetize. He said, no, monetization will come, right? Now, one can say, oh, it's not a business model to get bought by Yahoo. Not everyone gets bought by Yahoo. But those that do get bought by Yahoo and Google and Facebook and Google and everyone else, they do it because they make a superior product, period. End of story. There's, there's very few exceptions to that rule, right? There are exceptions. And technology, by the way, is not true that you don't, that the technology companies don't get bought, obviously, right? I mean, look at Face.com. They, they didn't have a business model, but they had a technology, right? So they were bought for their technology. So I'm not saying technology is not good, don't get me wrong, but it's not good to say, I'm starting a business or an app or whatever, a startup, and I'm going to focus on business model from day one. No, focus on product from day one. Build the business model as traction comes. Here's uh, Robert Scoble, who's uh, also a mega blogger, uh, evangelist for Rackspace. Why I love waves. Love. That's the important word here. On the way to Disneyland, routing me around traffic, showed me where cops were, and was more accurate than Google or Toyota Maps as to arrival time. Get it now for Android and iOS. Now, just want to give some context here. Putting aside everything that I just said, just, I want he wrote this publicly. This is the guy that saw the two founders of Siri in their basement when they were developing Siri. And he went and he opened Twitter and he wrote, I just saw these two guys developing Siri, someone has to buy them. A few months later, Apple bought them for $300 million, I believe. He was literally the first person to see them. I mean, this is the kind of influence this guy has. He didn't write this because he opened an app full of, you know, spammy, you know, business models, quote unquote. He opened it because he, he wrote this because he got an amazing experience from Waze. That's, what he, that's why he turned to his... Huge following, and he wrote, I love waves. The conclusion is, anybody know this movie? That's a little Feel the dreams? This is, I mean, it's, it's, the conclusion is clear. If you build it, they will come, right? You build your product, and you focus from day one on execution, most polish, and you build something that you're proud of and that you would use, right? You yourself would use, they will come, right? The money will come, the revenue will come, the users will come, they'll, they'll come. But if you focus on them, on the revenue, and on the buyouts, and on the business models from day one to impress whoever you're trying to impress, and you don't build your product, the retention will suffer. You might get some traction, you know, the investors might be happy and, and, and throw you some money, that would be great. But in the long run, you won't build something that's long standing, you won't get acquired, and, and at the end of the day, everyone loses. The users lose, you lose, everyone, including the investors, by the way, because the investors also need retention. The, the, the bottom line is, for every company across the industry, you need to build it first, build something that you're proud of, everything else will come. Bravo. Bravo.